How long are the filming hours on a Bridgerton set? Can the stars make any changes in the script? And is being in a corset for the whole day really that painful? Keep watching to find out all the strict rules the cast had to follow. Three barrier rule. Shooting any kind of spicy scenes can be tricky. Having to shoot such a scene with a blanket thrown over people makes it easier. But Bridgerton is known for showing literally everything. And without any kind of practice or preparation, shooting these scenes could get incredibly uncomfortable for the actors. That's why Bridgerton has hired an intimacy coordinator who practices those scenes with the main stars like choreography. This season, the intimacy coordinator Lizzie Talbot took care of all the spicy scenes. She writes out all the scenes from the script and discusses them with both the directors and the actors. Her job is to make the scene look the most passionate and intimate while the actors feel comfortable and know what exactly is going to happen. Lizzie gushed about working with Jonathan Bailey and Simone Ashley, the main stars of the second season. She said in an interview, Johnny brings such a wonderful energy, charm, and hilarity, and Simone is so confident, cool, calm, collected. It was a really beautiful merging. Simone shared how comfortable she felt on a set and also revealed that the scene in episode 7 took two days to film, but not once have the stars had any complaints. Simone revealed, I am confident that I can speak up if I'm not feeling comfortable with anything on set. We were in a very safe environment and we worked with an incredible intimacy coordinator who encouraged us to portray what it is for the female character to experience pleasure. Jonathan Bailey recalled filming these scenes as well, saying, It's amazing how the whole industry has just come on, even in a year. There are new tricks to the trade, little cushions, and it's amazing what you can do with a half-inflated netball. While we know next to nothing about how these scenes get made, Jonathan let us in on a rule that comes with filming these scenes. Well, if there are two people doing a spicy scene, the rule is they must have three barriers separating them, and there are certain acts where a half-inflated netball can allow for movement without having to connect physically. It's pretty silly, really, and we have some hilarious moments, but it makes it less awkward. Even though we haven't seen the highly praised netball, it's safe to say it was the savior of the main couple this season. Exhausting work hours. Just like any other TV show, Bridgerton wants to get the best shot possible. And with sets like fancy balls or rooms full of people, the shooting of one simple shot can stretch into long, grueling hours. According to the cast, the filming hours can stretch up to 15 hours. Jonathan Bailey revealed that he got some tips from his on-screen younger sister, Phoebe Dynavore. She played Daphne in the last season, so she knew what it was like having to look her best despite working for hours. He said, She advised me to get fit, eat healthily, and get as much sleep as possible because you'd be working 14 to 15 hours a day. Phoebe was great at counseling me because it's not something that you can explain to your friends and family who don't see you for weeks on end. Filming after the success of the first season and during a pandemic made it particularly intense. With such a high number of people on set, the COVID cautionary testing was happening regularly. The balls, which show us up to 100 people stuffed in one hall together, took sometimes five days to film. Another time-consuming thing was transforming into the character. Polly Walker, who plays Lady Featherington, said in an interview, Most days I would be in the dressing room by 4.30 a.m., getting fitted and having my hair and makeup done. It took hours. Even getting into the corset was an ordeal in itself, and I can't tell you how relieved I was to get out of it after a day of filming. Time is money, and no matter how long the shooting hours took, Netflix's budget for this season had it covered. One episode of Bridgerton ended up costing approximately up to $7 million. No changes. The Bridgerton script is highly confidential, so no leaks would swarm the internet before the show even drops. But did you know that the script is so top secret that even the cast themselves didn't see it before they agreed to the role? One of the cast members, Luke Thompson, who plays Benedict Bridgerton, revealed in an interview, You only get like a scene or a couple of scenes, that's all you get. Well, that's all I got to start with anyway. You get such a strong flavor and the two they gave me were the swing scenes in season one. He's talking about the swing scenes where Eloise and Benedict have some sibling bonding. Luke recalled that accepting for him was a no-brainer. Once the actors accept the script, they're aware that they can't change anything about it. The script is fully set in stone. Polly Walker, who played Lady Featherington, said, You're not allowed to change an it or a but or anything. However, the actress Bessie Carter, who plays Prudence, revealed that there are occasional moments that are allowed to be changed, but nothing major. Although there is a moment of improvisation that they made me do, and I was terrified because I love having a script, they were like improvised talking and showing him this, and they kept it in. I won't tell you which bit it was, but I was very proud that it made it into the show. The actors must keep the plot strictly secret, to the point where, in the first season, the actors were given fake endings before the reveal of Lady Whistledown. Golda Rochevelle, who plays Queen Charlotte, explained in an interview, We never got the right endings in the script, so no one of the cast really knew. If they hadn't read the books, none of the cast new. Now, as the writers are divorcing the books more and more, it means that the endings will be even harder to guess. It seems like the showrunners like to keep us all on our toes, and that includes the cast. 
show must go on. The golden rule of every TV show is that the show must go on no matter what. And this goes for Bridgerton as well. The filming of the show is full of tiny accidents, but all of them are now happy memories for the cast. Jonathan Bailey shared his embarrassing accident on set. The fencing sequence brought about its complications. The fencing outfits were quite tight in various places, and we were wearing plimsolls on quite a dewy morning on grass. Going in for my final lunch with Benedict, my crotch ripped, and it was all on camera. Another accident happened to the Featheringtons as they were headed to the ball. Polly Walker, who plays Lady Portia Featherington, recalled the incident. There were massive, massive costumes and headdresses and everything like that, and we only had so much time to get in the carriage for the shot. I can't remember who went in first, but they got their dress caught and they fell flat inside the carriage. And then it was one by one and we were basically all on top of each other. Then the carriage went off and we were all just sort of lying on top of each other on the floor. Honestly, we can't even imagine what it must feel like to wear the heavy costume, but to fall over must be even worse. Thankfully, none of the actors got injured, so the cast can now all laugh it off. Painful Costumes Bridgerton is known for their breathtaking costumes. All the intricate details and beautiful tones of color take hours to perfect. Sophie Canale, the costume designer, revealed, We average about 700 costumes, with about 160 makes every six weeks. There's no other production like it. But the key to every Bridgerton costume is the corset underneath the dress. These corsets are made to be way less harmful than the corsets that were used in the Regency era. Still wearing a corset on the very first day on the set became fateful for the star Simone Ashley. She shared a story. On my first day on set, I was like, okay, first day as a leading lady, got to eat lots of food, be really energized. So I had this massive portion of salmon. And that's when I needed to be sick, basically, because I was wearing the corset. I realized when you wear the corset, you just don't eat. It changes your body. I had a smaller waist very momentarily. Then the minute you stop wearing it, you're just back to how your body is. She also revealed that despite wearing it for the season, she didn't become best friends with it. When you're in a corset, you can't put your shoes on. I had a lot of pain with the corset too. I think I tore my shoulder at one point. Simone is our hero, but at least she now has a new personal rule. Big lunch before corset is a no-no. It seems like over the two seasons, the cast has built their own rules they need to follow to last in the corsets. Her co-star, Golda Rochevelle, also shared her experience with corsets. I am double corseted. I love them, but you have to have stamina when you're wearing two corsets for that long. I train regularly and drink lots of water because you have to stay hydrated. Hats off to the queen. No souvenirs. From costumes to props and filming sets, the show goes all out in all aspects. So wouldn't you like to take a little souvenir home with you as a memory of fun shooting times? Well, there's a strict rule on Bridgerton. No things can be taken from the set. The stars recall that they, in fact, did try to break this rule. Jonathan Bailey said he tried to take home Anthony Bridgerton's signet ring, but was pulled back in by the costume team. However, there were a few things that disappeared from the closet. The costume designer Sophie Canelli explained, each costume's jewelry becomes quite precious to people. So there might have been a few rings that sneaked into people's handbags and a corset. Phoebe Dynavor wanted to keep her corset as a bit of a keepsake. It's not every day you have a Mr. Pearl corset. So after all, maybe Phoebe is the only person who got to keep a piece of memorabilia. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all for watching.